The New York Times is coming out with a new national ad campaign this weekend. It asks this question, how do we arrive at the truth? The truth is our nation is more divided than ever. The truth is alternative facts are just plain delusional. The truth is the media needs to be held accountable. The truth is locker room talk is harmless. The campaign is not related to the Trump administration, but it does follow President Trump's related criticism of the Times. The ad also comes just days after the president said that the, quote, fake news media is the enemy of the American people. The New York Times executive editor Dean Baquet assumed the newsroom's highest ranked position in 2014. He joins us at the table. Good morning. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Good morning to you. You're in the newspaper business. What's I with am. the <laughs> ad about the truth? I think it's great. First, we have not taken out a large national ad campaign in a long time. Um, we thought this was a very powerful moment. I think this is the most clarifying moment we've had in a generation about the role of the press. I think that it's, been, it's very clear at this moment what our mission is, and I think it's time to toot our horn and tell people that our mission is to find the truth, that's hard work, and that we want you to read us because we care deeply about the truth at a time when, to be frank, a lot of people don't. Well, the president says that you all don't tell the truth. He certainly used the New York Times as a punching bag, as he has with a lot of media <clears throat> outlets. But you all say it has nothing to do with the Trump administration. And, Dean, that just sounds a little th 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 <laughs> this, this is just a coincidence that it's coming at this time? Well, let me put it this way. Um, it's probably not completely a coincidence. Mm -hmm. I think there is no question that this president has attacked the press pretty relentlessly. Um, and there's also no question that our role in covering him is being questioned by him. I think this is our way of saying that we have a very powerful role in the society. I think this is our way of saying that our role is clearer now than it's ever been. Um, and and what is that role that's clearer now than it's ever been to you? Our role is to ask tough questions of powerful people. And our role is to not accept easy answers from either powerful people or people who are not so powerful. Mm -hmm. Steve, to, Steve Bannon, this chief White House mm -hmm. strategist, as you know, very critical, yep. called you the opposition party, says you don't understand this country. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand what happened with Trump. To any degree do you think the Times has been out of touch with part of the country? I think the media in general, including us, did not quite have a handle on how much anger there was in the country. Um, Why did you miss it? I miss it is too strong, by the way. I think the whole world missed it. I think that there was tremendous anger, and I think Donald Trump showed up and exploited it, and I think Donald Trump and the people around him understood it. I don't think anybody understood it before that, so I'm not, I'm not sure I'd go as far as to say. Um, I think that he energized that anger in the country um, to his political benefit. And I think w the whole press, not the whole press, but a lot of the press missed that. Um, and I think that's a fair criticism of us. Do you think the papers made mistakes in how they've covered this president? No. no. I think the Why? coverage of Donald Trump has been sensational. I mean sensational in a good way, not mm -hmm. sensationalistic. Mm -hmm. I think it's been tough. I think it's been aggressive. I think he's not used to it. I think our job, the, the, I led the coverage of the early days of Barack Obama, and nobody remembers what happened when Tom Daschle emerged as the most powerful aide to Barack Obama, and the media went after him hard because he was a lobbyist. But to cover this president, you've hired more reporters yep. to cover yep. the White House. You've increased your investigative unit. Why? Yeah. Because this is not just the story of Donald Trump. This is the story of a, of a politician who has come into office with a mandate to transform entire systems of government. Mm -hmm. This is a government we don't know the Secretary of State. Most Republican and Democratic presidents reach into the sort of world of professional bureaucrats to yep. pick their leaders. He didn't. We don't know these people. We need to examine them. We need to tell people who they are. Peter Baker, one of, the, one of the people, you, one of your reporters in the White House said, we shouldn't view this as a normal White House. It's not a normal White House in the sense that it is a, it is a revolutionary White House. If the, if the Trump administration does what it wants to do and puts your politics aside, it will be a revolution in how government functions. We have a head of the EPA who questions whether there should be an EPA. We have a businessman running the State Department. We have three generals at the top of the national security apparatus. That is unusual, and that's, a, that's not a normal system of government. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's just unusual, and unusual is a bigger story that requires much greater scrutiny. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, over the weekend, um, uh, Liz Spade, of course, who is your public editor, raised a lot of questions, though, about the New York Times <clears throat> coverage. Uh, I read it again uh, last night. And particularly, she wrote this. There's a wide and perilous gulf between the value journalists place on anonymous sources and the value that readers do. Some may never accept information with roots they cannot see. Do you get that criticism that the anonymous that, that there was a whole Maggie Haberman and Glenn yeah. Thresh were terrific, terrific reporters and they have yeah. done a great job, but they've done a lot of reporting where the entire piece is all anonymous sources. Yeah. How can you provide more transparency for your readers? I think we can be clearer to readers. Liz had a point. We can be clearer to readers about where the sources come from. But let's be clear: <laughs> anonymous sources have been responsible for the most important journalism. Particularly Specifically. Watergate, yeah. mm -hmm. the New York Times' disclosure of the NSA spying on, on Americans. The CIA black sites. The CIA black sites. Anonymous sources. Flynn's conversations done with right. Russians. Absolutely. And both sides use them. Yes. But anonymous sources, the notion that anonymous sources are all manipulative bureaucrats trying to get, anonymous sources are also people who are uncomfortable with government, who are uncomfortable with the actions of their superiors. I will defend the proper use of anonymous sources. Right. I don't think that you can cover national security or this government without a lot of anonymous sources. Well, you don't seem to be cowering at the charges of fake news. Well, you because, seem to be energized because in your news I, the, I, I find right. I find this. I mean, I've been in journal. I've journalist since I was four. In, I've been a journalist for 40 years yeah. since I was 19. I have not been more energized. And my newsroom has never been this energized. Yeah, and your subscriptions are up too, That's right? That's right. Dean Bouquet, thank you very much. Thank you.